yourselves and you're watching Bredo Live. What is going on guys? Bredo Live back with another video and today we have the Week in Review episode 131. This is where we go over Raw and Smackdown in a WWE action figure setup style. Before we even get started, smash a like on this video, subscribe to the channel so you guys never miss a video, turn on notifications so you really, really never miss a video. But yes, this is episode 131 of the Week in Review. We're going to go over a, a boring Monday Night Raw first. Um, if you guys want to uh, skip to Smackdown, feel free to. Um, but yeah, we're going to jump into Raw first. We're here with Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin going up against Mustafa Ali and Mansoor. And believe it or not, this is the last time we're ever going to see Mons Mansoor and Mustafa Ali team up together. Shelton, ben Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander were able to pick up the victory, which I was like, okay, that's pretty good actually. Because, you know, the reform related like her business, you know, get him a little momentum. I think that's kind of cool. The match itself was pretty lame. I'm not even going to lie. No, no action, like barely whatsoever. Um, but yeah. But what happened after, backstage, Mustafa Ali showing his frustration again with Mansoor backstage, and then Ali finally snapped. He just started beating the crap out of Mansoor, threw him on the floor, beat the crap out of him, and then they set up a match for the crown jewel, Mansoor versus Ali. And you gotta think that Mansoor is gonna be picking that up in his hometown. Come on! It, it ought to be good, though. That ought to be a good match. Mansoor and Ali, two high flyers. That's gonna be really good. I'm actually I'm actually kind of excited for that. Uh, moving over here, it was Natalia versus Dewdrop in the Queen's Crown tournament and this match sucked uh dewdrop was able to pick up the victory which whatever i think she's going on to face Shayna baszler uh in the queen's crown tournament but yeah as far as this match goes i'm not a fan of dewdrop not a fan of natalia so uh this match was not not that good for me <laughs> moving over here is jeff hardy and uh going up against austin theory the man that made his debut last week at the expense of jeff hardy by taking a selfie with him and then attacking him right after uh, this match was all right. Um, Jeff Hardy was going for the Swanton Bomb. I'm like, oh my God, Jeff's about to Jeff's about to win. I cannot believe this. Finally, Jeff's about to pick up the victory. This is about to be sick. But then Austin Theory moved out of the way, and then Austin Theory was able to pin Jeff Hardy. I'm like, what? Come on, dude. They never give Jeff any wins. I swear, a win every once in a great while. But I swear they never give Jeff any wins. Um, but yeah, Austin Theory was able to pick up the victory, and then later Austin Theory took another selfie with Big E backstage. So you never know. His next target should be, uh, might be Big E. But as far as that match goes and Jeff losing again not a fan over here Bobby Lashley made his appearance out to the ring basically just a promo no Goldberg no no like no her business nobody just Bobby Lashley coming out suit in all glasses with the microphone basically talking about how he was super offended by Goldberg saying he's trying to kill Bobby Lashley at the crown jewel which I would be too if I was heading into a wrestling match and somebody was trying to kill me like what I'd be a little worried so Bobby Lashley's just like just spitting vax about all that bullcrap how Goldberg's trying to kill him which I thought was kind of funny at some times, but I'm definitely on Bobby Lashley's side. I really hope Bobby Lashley's able to dethrone Goldberg because I freaking can't stand Goldberg anymore. He's so annoying. Moving, here, moving over here, another queen, uh, Queen's Crown match, Shayna Baszler, Dana Brooke. Oh, this was so freaking lame. Oh my gosh. So... Shayna Baszler picks up the victory, obviously. Uh, she tapped her out with the curfew to clutch, I believe. And then, so weird. I guess Shayna was trying to uh, go after Dana Brooke one more time and like try to you know get some extra shots in on her. And then Dana, Dana evades, and then she basically just says, that was uncalled for. That was uncalled for. From the outside of the ring, I'm like, this is, this is terrible. What? It was just like, okay. This, they, it could have went totally without that. Just have Dana leave the ring and forget about Dana, as we always do. Um, but yeah, Shayna is going to be moving on in the Queen's Crown, I guess. It was the King of the Ring tournament, which is, it's it's okay. The King of the Ring tournament, it's it's just okay. I'm not really too fond of any of the participants. Like, the guys that are left in it that can become King of the Ring, I'm like, ugh, I don't really see any of them being like becoming King. Um, but anyways, it was Jinder Mahal versus Kofi Kingston one-on-one. -on -one. Jinder Mahal ended up surprisingly picking up the victory. I was so shocked when he was able to pin Kofi Kingston. I'm like, you've got to be kidding. There's no way. But yeah, he was able to hit the Colossus one, two, three. He did have Veer and Shanky on ringside, so that might have played a minor factor. Um, but yeah, I, I really wanted to see Kofi Kingston versus this man, Xavier Woods. Xavier Woods also qualifying uh, and beating Ricochet to move on in the King of the Ring tournament. He was able to hit the springboard elbow drop to uh, take out Ricochet. One, two, three. I really freaking wanted Ricochet to win this. King Ricochet. Like, dude, that was already his nickname. That would be so good. Um, but no, they just did. They gave it to Woods. And supposedly Woods is supposed to win the entire thing. But it would have been after this, Woods versus Kofi. And I'm like, that would be so epic. But now it's going to be Woods versus um, Mahal. So, uh, 
um, I'm so excited for that. But no, I would imagine Xavier Woods goes on to the uh, finals there. I would assume so against Finn Balor. I don't think Sami Zayn's going to get there. He might, though. You never know. Moving over here, it was Riddle versus Omos. One-on-one -on -one. Riddle challenged Omos to a match earlier in the show, and Randy's like, what are you doing, Riddle? I'm not helping you with that. That was a dumb That was a dumb mistake you made there. So uh, Riddle thought that Randy Orton was going to help him out in the beginning, and the match was never going to get underway. So he's like, Randy, now. So I thought that was kind of funny. And then Randy didn't come, and then Omos just destroyed him. It just Dallas calling the uh, shots on the outside with a microphone. Riddle ends up getting pinned, one, two, three. But then after the match, AJ Styles and Omos are looking for Randy Orton because his music hit after Riddle got destroyed. And then somehow Randy Orton is hit, able to hit another RKO on AJ Styles. Another one. I swear, he always hits RKO was on AJ Styles. Never almost. Never almost. When will he hit an RKO on almost? It's got to be soon. It's got to be freaking soon. I don't know if they've made this tag match for the Crown Jewel, but it's got to be happening at the Crown Jewel. There's no if, ands, or what's about it. it, it it's definitely going to happen. Moving over here. Oh, I was not a fan of this. But anyways, it was Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks going up against Becky Lynch and Charlotte in a tag team match. And basically, the entire thing about this match, the commentators were trying to put over a bunch of egos colliding. So the match never got started in the beginning because they just kept on arguing and fighting. And then Pierce and uh, DeVille come out. They're like, this match needs to to get underway so the match ends up getting underway and then it ends the same way they just start beating the crap out of each other banks and um bel-air and then it just goes south and it's a done another disqualification all out brawl it's like they keep on ending these four women right here they keep on doing it ending in all out brawls stop please it's getting so old um but yeah that's basically how it went moving over here the best part of the show in my opinion in the beginning of the show the usos interrupted drew and big e as they were having a little argument in the ring about the crown jewel and the wwe championship and then it turned into a tag team match in the main event the usos versus drew mcintyre and big e i loved this match i thought it was so good to get the usos something good from smackdown to shed a little bit of goodness here on monday night raw and it definitely helped just a tiny bit um but yeah it was a really good tag team match in the end it was a disqualification drew mcintyre and big e did get counted out uh, because they started brawling with each other on the outside so the egos you know they just collided similar to with the women uh, on the outside and then it was a disqualification uh, but then the Usos started fighting them. They started fighting back in the Usos. They took out the Usos, and then Drew and Big E went at it in the middle of the ring, and then Drew was able to hit a claymore on Big E. So that almost like seals the deal that Big E is going to be winning and retaining at the Crown Jewel and then going to go on to face Roman Reigns at... Survivor Series, which I am very, very excited for. Survivor Series ought to be pretty good this year, not even going to lie. But yes, guys, as far as this Monday Night Raw, not so good. I, w I was really bored most of the time. Um, I was like, just so bored. Like, oh my gosh, just end already. Three hours, just make it a two-hour show. Oh my gosh, please. Um, but yeah, that was Monday Night Raw. In the end, I'm probably going to give it a two out of five. I was just bored, just super bored. Um, let me know what you guys thought down of the show down in the comments down below. Now we're going to jump into SmackDown. And continuing the week in review here with the supersized SmackDown. Was it really supersized in length? Definitely. But in like the actual guts of the show, it was just okay. Uh, we're going to talk about it. We're going to dive in right now. We're here with a semifinals match for the Queen's Crown Tournament. It was Selena Vega going up against her Carmella. Winner will go on to the finals match to either face Dewdrop or Shayna Baszler. This match was pretty bad. I'm not even going to lie. Uh, Carmella, she tried using the mask nearing the end of the match, and then Liv Morgan was outside uh, not allowing like Carmella's assistance to give her the mask, and then that distracted Carmella in order for Selena Vega to roll up Carmella and pick up the victory. I'm like, this was terrible. And then Selena Vega basically just tries on the crown. I cannot believe, by the way, I cannot believe that Selena Vega is in the finals of the freaking Queen's Crown. I, I literally am in, I'm in shock. I'm in shock. That's crazy. I just thought that was all pretty much bullcrap. Speaking of bullcrap mad cat moss and baron corbin come out and this was so freaking weird okay so mad cat moss tells a joke right super bad obviously i don't find these guys entertaining whatsoever and i thought for sure i'm like yep kevin owens is gonna come out and he's gonna get beat up again nope nope shinsuke nakamura and rick boogs come out and they just do a dance on the ring and then they completely forget about baron corbin and mad cat moss in the ring and it's like they were never there gone boom gone and then Shinsuke and um, freaking, what's his name? Shinsuke and Boogs, gone. And then it turns into Street Profits versus Usos. Literally. 
literally all this is happening in one segment. I'm like, what is happening? Total bullcrap. And then it turns into Street Profits versus the Usos for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. This match wasn't too bad. It was a street fight. So uh, I was into it. It, was, it wasn't a bad match. Uh, pretty obvious, though, because Street Profits are headed on over to Monday Night Raw. I believe so. I could be wrong on that. Um, so why would they give them the SmackDown uh, Tag Team titles? So that's definitely not happening. It was an okay match. But in the end, we saw the Usos do a double frog splash to Angela, Angela Dawkins and then pick up the victory. Not bad. There was some kendo sticks used, a table used on the outside. It was all right. Nothing too crazy good. Opening of the show, it was Edge coming out, talking about how he's going to dismantle Seth Rollins at the Crown Jewel inside of the cell. It's definitely going to be good. I'm very excited for it. I'm surprised they're doing it at the Crown Jewel. I'm surprised they're not making us wait. Um, I feel like they're giving it to us pretty quick here. So I'm really excited for it. Edge basically just talking about how Seth Rollins took it a little too far, going to his family's house, this, that. Just super basic stuff like <laughs> like the cell. You know, it's changed me before. Like, okay, we've heard this. We've heard this. Pretty intense promo, though, in the beginning. It was, it was all right. Good way to start the show. And then Seth Rollins later did his promo, basically just saying how uh, the cell has changed him, too, and that he's going to end the final chapter after inside the cell by beating edge so i'm really looking forward to their match inside of the cell like i said let's hope it redeems for the fiend match that really bad cell ending to the fiend match that seth had let's really hope it helps that ending and the most recent hell in the cell pay-per-view that we did have terrible so let's hope it uh turns it around here with this match here at the crown jewel because they don't normally do cell matches out of like outside of the main pay-per-view the cell so like i'm very interested to see how they're going to change things. Moving over here, King of the Ring semifinals uh, match. It was Finn Balor going up against Sami Zayn. This match was pretty good. I enjoyed it, definitely. Uh, I actually thought Sami Zayn had this one in the bag at some times in this match. I'm like, yeah, Sami Zayn's going to win this. Uh, but no, Finn Balor in the end was able to hit the coup de grace on Sami Zayn, pick up the victory, and I really hope Finn Balor can pick up that King of the Ring. I really think it's going to be Xavier Woods, though. That's like the big talk right now is Xavier Woods is going to beat Finn Balor. Or it could be Jinder Mahal since they're headed down to Saudi Arabia. That'd be, good. That'd be a good look for WWE. So it could be Jinder Mahal. I don't know. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. I'm very interested, though. I'm pretty interested to see who's going to win King of the Ring. I'm pretty interested. Um, moving over here, it was Naomi. The, ugh, this was kind of bad. It was uh, it was supposed to be Naomi versus Sonya Deville one on one. I'm like, dang, I'm really surprised they're giving us this match, but they didn't. Uh, Sonya Deville's like, I'm gonna have a partner. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be Shayna Baszler. It's gonna be a two on one handicap match. I'm like, okay, this just went to complete crap. Like this was the thing. This was the one woman's thing that I was super into over the past couple weeks, and they just sent it right to crap. Right to crap. Shayna just taps out or just passes out Naomi and picks up the victory after um, Sonya Deville puts the foot over. I'm like. Okay, first of all, that was supposed to be a knockout victory by Shayna Baszler because she knocked her out. And it was just a mess. It was it was horrendous. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Moving over here was the main event of the show. It was Shane uh, it was uh, Sasha Banks going up against Becky Lynch one on one. This match was alright. I I gotta admit I basically spent probably 50% of the match on my phone. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. Um, but uh, the, I mean, the, 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 I mean, like the, the moves that I saw, it wasn't too bad. In the end, we saw Bianca Belair, um, hit a secret move on Becky Lynch, like slamming her arm down on the, uh, apron. Uh, and then the ref didn't see it in order for Sasha Banks to pick up the victory. It was very odd seeing an actual pinfall match, like an actual pinfall between like in a Sasha Banks match. I, I feel like I haven't seen Sasha Banks like get an actual real pinfall in like the longest time without it being like a disqualification or anything like that. I thought I found this kind of boring to be honest. Moving over here, my favorite part of the show, I had to wait two and a half hours for it. It was Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, the contract signing for the crown jewel. I'm so excited for this match. It could go either way. Who is it going to be? Lesnar, Reigns, we don't know. It could be Lesnar, but I have a feeling they're going to keep it on Reigns. I hope they keep it on Reigns. Uh, anyways, amazing contract signing. They signed the contract very quick. It was like, boom, boom. I was like, whoa, no talking? Very interesting. And then Reigns is like, are you dumb, Lesnar? You just signed that that quick without looking over it? And then Lesnar's like, I already looked over it earlier with my advocate, Paul Heyman, so spreading a little more controversy with Roman Reigns and Paul. I love it so much. I thought it was so cool. Uh, Brock Lesnar didn't hold the title up, but I just thought that was an amazing look for Lesnar right there with the title. He's got his flannel. I just think that was just awesome. I love the ending of the show. As far as everything else goes, just all right. I was really bored throughout the entire show. I'm not even going to lie with you guys. Really bored. In the end, probably going to give it a 2 out of 5. Uh, like I said, I was just so bored. I don't know. I just don't get excited for any of these matches. Uh, the only thing I get excited for is Roman Reigns and sometimes an Edge promo or match. That's the only thing that I really get excited for. 
You know, the Finn Balor stuff was all right, but as far as everything else, it was just like, yeah, it was just okay. Two out of five for SmackDown. Let me know what you guys thought about the show. Send the comments down below. And I really began to enjoy this video. Bird alive. Out.